This is the Bates Bobcast, our weekly podcast that takes a look at the week that was in Bates Athletics. My name is Aaron Morse, and this week we're looking back at the Bates football team's thrilling win at Amherst. Plus, men's soccer played a pair of wild NESCAC matches, and field hockey earned yet another NESCAC victory. All that and more coming up on the Bates Bobcast. Senior Muhammad Diawara caught a touchdown pass with 13 seconds remaining and the Bates football team rallied from 9 points down to defeat the Amherst College Mammoths 27-23 Saturday afternoon in NESCAC action. It's the first win of new Bates head coach Matt Coyne's career at the helm of the program and the first time Bates has beaten Amherst in football since 1999. Coach Coyne looks back on the thriller at Pratt Field. It didn't really sink in for me. It was more so for the players. I mean, just to see how hard they've worked and the coaches have worked, um, to see it come to fruition in that environment, uh, regardless of what Amherst record is, that team has played close with some of the top teams in our conference this year. And to go there, you know, I have a lot of respect for their staff, and, and that's a hard place to win, as you can see. Um, so just to be able to do that there and see it come to fruition, it just shows the progress that we've talked about week by week. Um, in the program, and now, you know, we're on to Bowdoin, and that's that's the next focus. Yeah, and obviously a road win's never easy, no matter who your opponent is. Uh, Low-scoring first half, guys got it going there in the second. In fact, the second was back and forth, back and forth, so really two very different halves, it feels like. Yeah, it sort of opened up a little bit. I think, uh, you know, our, I think our defense over the past few weeks has gotten much better, and they've been, you know, controlling some of the big plays that, that we gave up earlier in the year. Um, uh, and same thing goes for their defense. We knew how good they were on that side of the ball. So it was a feel-out process, and, and you know, obviously the ball didn't bounce our way on the pick six. It's, it seems to happen every week at some point. <laughs> like, you know, fortunately, hopefully this week we can have that thing hit the ground or catch it. Um, but you know, after that, I think a big play was blocking that PAT and just getting some momentum back from Jack Ryan. And you know, then we went on a big 15-play, 75-yard drive to score. And that's huge. That just shows the growth um, and the ability – not only from you know Coach Thompson just calling some great plays all day, but our players are just locking in. Um, so it was, it was super exciting to see that happen, and obviously the second half was boom, 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 back and forth, and guys making plays, and you know it was super exciting to see our guys just go capture it. Yeah, and I mean Colton Bossele, he's a sophomore, right? I, he's right now. I feel like he is a, it's an old-fashioned term, but he's a gunslinger, right? I mean, he's gonna go out there and let it fly and see what happens, right? <laughs> Yeah, we just uh, you have to reel in the letting it fly at sometimes, you know. But what his best attribute is is to see him come back from the, from that second half performance against Colby. Mm-hmm. And obviously, you know, nobody was harder on on him than himself, to be quite honest. After that, but he has this innate ability to just let it go, and that's what you need to have at that position. And just you know, it, it is what it is. We move forward, um, and it, for him to come out and operate again against that defense that. I think the highest point total they gave up before that was 24, I believe, with with Hamilton, and that included a blocked punt and things like that. But 23 game against Trinity, like that's pretty impressive, you know, for Colton to come back, bounce back, and and give our guys a chance to make some plays, um, especially in the end zone. Yeah, and that final drive you mentioned, you only had one timeout, I think, um, and you didn't have to use it. Right? But um, Christian Oliveri, I mean, what can you say about him and his ability to make those plays to get you into the position for the game when he passed to Muhammad Diawara? I mean, it's it's not surprising to us because we see it every day. Um, that kid works extremely hard, and um, you know he's super important to our program, our team. Um, you know, to we practice that week in and week out. Those two minute drills. Um, that one was a little bit lighter in time than we've practiced, but we've had situations where we've you talk about it, getting up to the ball and clocking it and saving the timeout and be able to get a good play call in. You know. Most people will say, oh, you got a first time, the, the clock stops, call a play. But it's like, no, we don't need to right now. You know, let's get a good play call. We got three downs after we spike it. Um, let's keep it moving. And then we just felt like that last play, and, you know, I think simultaneously, you know, Coach Thompson said it, and I was thinking it as well. It's like, let's give seven a shot. Mm-hmm. Like, let, let's try to win this game. And, and we knew they had a freshman safety back there, and we, we talked about it earlier in the week. Let's attack them and see if he can make the play. And, 
um, we were lucky that this time our guy, you know, made the play and we were able to, to, to get out of there with the W. Yeah, just watching the tape, Diawara, it looks like he burned not one but two Amherst defenders there. <laughs> yeah, so they were playing like a little bracket quarter, so the backer was trying to wall off inside and, and safety was playing a little bit head up to outside support and he um, just ran a little corner post, you know, a little double move that, that we've worked on and, you know, he split it and once I saw it, I was just hope, hoping that the ball was on him because it was there. Um, so it was a great play ball call by Coach Thompson, great ball by Colton, and a great route and protection by our line. Everybody, you know, everybody did their 111th, and, and we got it done. Let's talk about the play earlier in the game for, I believe, the first touchdown. Yeah. The trick play. Yeah. A little backwards pass to Jackson Hayes, and he threw it for Sean Bryant for the touchdown. I mean, Jackson Hayes, that's his first career touchdown pass, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> it was something we saw, and we just said, hey, you know, they're, they're an extremely difficult team to score on in the red zone. You know, I mean, I think you saw that you have to make a 50-50 play to score on them. You're not going to really be able to run the ball. So our fade mm -hmm. balls we threw, um, two of Colton's best throws he's thrown, yeah. the back shoulder fades. Um, and that's something that, you know, Coach Thompson and the offense coach made in practices. Um, but that play we just felt we were going to get a little something from him, and, and we thought we could, could hit him on it. And fortunately for us, uh, you know, it worked out. It made us look like we're smarter than we are. <laughs> now, why Jackson for the one the wide receiver to throw that? Uh, he was just a guy that th you know th that could throw the best. You know, what I'm yeah. saying we wanted to set it up and um, bring him in motion. He's a guy we use motions a lot with as well, uh -huh. so we didn't want to give it away. Right. Um, so it was uh, it was executed perfectly, and you know we were able to get six points out of it. Excellent. Um, George Hawkins had another big game. Ten solo tackles at linebacker. He continues to get better and better. He told I interviewed him today. He talked about how he's a, a three-two guy. This might be the last year you have him here, but he's making the most of it. Yeah. Um, so you know, George has been. He's like you said. He's gotten better each week, and, and you know, uh, I know myself. Like I'm super hard on him because I love him and I want him to get better, and, and we see it. And, and for George, I mean. It's awesome to see it happen because he works hard. You know, he knows intellectually the defense like the back of his hand. Mm -hmm. um, and at times we just had to translate that on the field, and we're seeing it happen. And in that game, I mean, he makes a big stop on a screen, makes a ton of tackles across the field. And, it, and it's great to see that because, uh, you know, it's a great compliment to Tony inside the box there yeah. that, that we have two guys that we feel um, can handle the run that way. And then Archie Green Jr. was named NESCAC Special Teams Player of the Week. Um, his punts, he, he pinned Amherst twice inside their own 20, uh, made three more PATs for you guys also, just doing it all a little bit, right? Yeah, and Archie's been great. I think, you know, special teams, obviously we had the one low snap that he got off and um, killed his average a little bit, but it was actually impressive that he got it off mm -hmm. and got it out to the 30. Um, but all year I think, you know, he's done a great job. He's a leader on the special teams. Um, I think our special teams has gotten better. Uh, yeah. We still can get better, but we haven't seen um, some of the major mistakes um, that can cost you. And we'll continue to work that because we know it could happen at any moment and we got to eliminate that. But he's done a great job, you know, to pin him deep, to flip the field. We talked about that in, the, in obviously the beginning of the year before the coaches. Yeah. Like that's going to be a major part of our success. Um, and I think you can see when you play the complementary football that way in all three phases, your margin for error gets a little bit wider, you know, and so that's what I talk about the guys. Like, we still have a very thin margin of error. We want to make sure we do things right, but see how the game flows and you do things the right way. It allows, a, you know, our defense to have, you know, a, a longer field to defend and um, force them to go on longer drives. So he's done great, you know, and the PAT that we had blocked was just a, a – we just didn't protect it up front, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. We got we got bull rushed and um, we made the great cor uh, correction of that up front with those guys, and they, they collected and helped block from the rest of the way. Great. And then any other guys you really want to call in terms of who stood out kind of in that game who maybe uh, we haven't talked about? Yeah, I think, you know, a whole unit. I think the offensive line, mm -hmm. and I know guys, you know, I know the rushing yards don't depict it, but what they did in a protection standpoint as well, like they've gotten better each week, and they allowed Colton the time um, to be able to operate in the pocket. And I know he had a few scramble plays, but – they did much better, um, and they've gotten better week by week, and they've gone against some really good defensive lines. You know, and so you know we feel really confident in them. Um, and you know, defensively, I think you know our, our and the secondary um, and our you know secondary didn't let up any big plays. And Jack Ryan played his butt off. You know, I'll tell you that he plays a ton of snaps, and to play yeah. that many snaps at that position, um, him and the rest of the D line, we're just seeing improvement in different areas. It's great to see. You know, they're all coming together. We got to just keep pushing it though, because we have a lot more room to grow. Um, and just because you win one game doesn't mean, you know, you throw a parade. And right. So we got to get back to work. We know we have a tough Bowden team coming in um, that's going to want to want to beat us, you know, after that, that game last year. And we have a lot of respect for it, and we know there's going to be a great crowd, and, and we just need to get better and focus on ourselves and just keep working and working and working. Um, and that's it. Yeah, big game under the lights um, this Saturday against Bowden. I mean, you, you touched on it. 
Bowden Bates has been some interesting contests, especially last year, down to the wire. I mean, uh, Bates has dominated the series a little bit, but you, you as you mentioned, Bowden's going to be hungry, right? Yeah, and, you know, they have, and obviously, you know, Coach Hammer and them are now into, I believe, year four, I, I believe it is. Um, but now they've been in a system. They have some guys that are older, and they have, you know, obviously their quarterback and running back are really good, you know, Bowl and Eden. Um, and they've had they have experience. Um, they play a defense, an aggressive defensive style that really can cause you issues if you if you don't control it. Um, so we know it's a great challenge. And, and like for us, it's it's strictly let's get back to work Tuesday. Let's practice the right way. Let's prepare the right way, and let's go out and execute. And, and you know, for us, um, not let the moment get too big. And and, and you know, we're, we know we're gonna have a great home crowd. We know we're gonna have a lot of support out there. And, and we're hoping to just go out there and execute for 60 minutes again and, and build off of. Um, you know, week four, you know, as we've done in the first four weeks. All right, Coach, thanks so much. Thank you. Diora caught the game winner, but it was fellow senior and male Bobcat of the week, Christian Oliveri, who reeled in three of his career-high nine catches on the final drive, setting up the Bobcats for success. He and Diora joined the Bobcast this week to break down the offense's success on Saturday. Happy to have Muhammad Diora and Christian Oliveri with us here on the Bobcast, talking some Bates football and Christian, let's start with the drive that led to Hom's uh, game-winning touchdown catch. Because you had quite a few catches on that drive, including one that I think the ball was tipped to the line of scrimmage and you were able to grab it. But take us through kind of your chemistry with Colton and how you were able to make some of those plays. That last drive, it's something we practice every single week. Like, we call it the two-minute drill. Um, we got to drive down the field and score points. And we do that in practice all the time, and it just correlated to happening in the game. But, yeah, that tip ball... We've had so many of those in the games this past year, and they have never gone our way. And then finally it has gone our way, and it just happened to happen at a a critical time. Did that kind of seem like slow motion when that happened? Take us through your point of view of the ball kind of coming towards you. Yeah, he was (laughs) was looking to throw to me. I saw that, and I think he got hit. The ball was tipped up, and it was just a 50-50 ball between me and the linebacker, and I just out-jumped him, grabbed it. Excellent. And then uh, game-winning touchdown catch. Congratulations, uh, Muhammad. Uh, two touchdown catches for you on Saturday. But the game winner, you ended up being wide open. I mean, take us through what you saw running that route. Um, I mean, the whole drive, it was just like it felt like the game was slowed down for us. I think um, being in the situations like Christian mentioned, we practiced a two-minute drill all the time. And then um, some. this is – we actually had a minute, I believe, a minute and four. So, like – it kind of, I felt like we were all comfortable in that play, so kind of lining up, it it just felt good. We got the look we wanted, um, trusting our coaches in the play calling like that. Like, we've ran that same exact play literally in practice, and unfortunately I didn't come up with it in practice, but, like, when the situation came, I was prepared for it, I guess. Um, and that's just a true testament to, to my teammates and my coaches for, like, believing in us, putting us in that opportunity to make those plays. So um, definitely a big shout-out there. But... I guess on that play, as I split the safeties, um, I kind of knew with the cover four look that uh, I kind of would have a shot to be open. And Colton did a great job starting with the O line; like they did a great protection. Um, and then the ball was just there, me and the ball, and I made a play. Coaches told us like nobody's gonna hand us anything in these games. Like you gotta take the opportunities. And our defense, uh, they were playing great all day. I can't definitely gotta stress that fact. Um, playing complimentary football, that's what it's all about. I think so. And I loved how Quinn Woods got in on the celebration. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 you like celebrating with the linemen there? I do, man. I, I think we talk about it a lot, too, like just celebrating with our teammates yeah. um, because those are the people you play for, um, especially like Quinn Woods, as we mentioned. He's a fifth-year senior. Um, staying here and taking the time out of his life to come back and play is something I really appreciate. Um, we've grown close this entire summer. Like We hung out a lot. We worked together, actually, in the summer. So it's just a good time to kind of celebrate with those guys because – at the end of the day, I don't make those plays if they don't protect up front. So, like, I love those guys. They they continue to do their job. They work their tails off and practice every day. Um, so, yeah, big shout-out to them. And, Christian, you're one of those fifth-year seniors um, Ham was just talking about, you know, coming back for this extra semester and everything to get another season in. But, you know, Coach Coyne has talked about this in our interviews about how this is a whole new system, really, on offense for you guys. So even though you're a fifth-year senior, you're kind of learning from scratch a little bit. Take us through what you've been learning so far from the new coaching staff. Learning a new playbook is mm-hmm. definitely a lot. It requires a lot of studying, a lot of watching film, a lot of meeting with the coaches. But it, it is a, a lot of time and effort put in. Every single day um, before practice, I'm in my playbook for at least 20 minutes. Game days, even longer than that, it's just uh, – 
in the past having that old playbook that I ran for three years, it was kind of instinct. And then this year, only running it for X amount of weeks, it's not so much. It just requires a lot more effort and time to be put in. What's the biggest difference in this playbook compared to the previous ones? Um, I would say it's uh, pretty similar. Um, the concepts are a little different. Um, it's a little more advanced in that uh, formations can be called to the left or the right. So it's not necessarily your position, but we can call a uh, play to the left or right without changing the formation. That kind of just brings another level to the playbook, which is which makes it harder uh, compared to our last one. That's the, one of the biggest differences that I've noticed between this one and uh, the one we rate, uh, ran in past years. Mahan, what do you think about the playbook in terms of what it was like before, perhaps? Um, quite honestly, I think, like, the coaches just found ways to kind of, like, make sure that we're getting to similar places. Or I want to say just highlighting our strengths and not our weaknesses. So, like, they're putting us in position to make these plays, I think, over and over again. Like, we see a lot of the same stuff that we've been doing, but, like, just different tweaks and advances to that. So, um, yeah. You both caught some uh, back shoulder uh Fades, I guess, fade routes, right, for touchdowns. Yep. Um, it's kind of similar concepts, I think, for both your touchdowns on those particular plays. But uh, yours was, I like the diving uh, effort there. What, what did you see on that play? It was uh, man-to-man coverage. Um, it was me and Hom on the field at that time. He was actually getting double covered, and I uh, still somehow managed to get open. But uh, just based on that look, Colton knew he was going to throw it to me. Uh, the DB played great coverage, was on top of me the whole time, but... Colton just threw a, a ball in an area where there was no way that the DB could have made a play on it, and I just happened to make a good catch. But it was a great throw. And then for how about for you for your touchdown? Uh, same thing. I feel yeah. like Colton just like quite honestly, we this is all the stuff we practice. Like like situations and things that we go through and practice are literally translate into the game. So um, once I got the release off the line of scrimmage, Colton literally put it behind me where only I could get it and um, made a play. Now, neither of you were involved with the trick play touchdown directly, but uh, it was a fun play. I mean, I, I, do you, does that, do you enjoy practicing like trick plays like that in practice and whatnot? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Those, those are definitely the team's favorite, and we threw that in during the week, mm-hmm. practice it every day, and it's great to see that unfold in a game and turn into a touchdown. Does Jackson want to play quarterback now, or what's going on there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely does. He's one for one with a touchdown. <laughs> well, that's right. It's in the stats forever, yeah. yeah. But, um, you, okay, so big game Saturday coming up, right? I mean, Bowden, under the lights, you guys have been here before, but Hom, what are some of your thoughts on the big game there this weekend? I mean, we just it's about us. I don't think it's about anything else than mm-hmm. what we have in the room. Um, we got to continue to focus on the things that we we have been focusing on and keep getting better every day. Um, our coaches tell us, like, it's all about the process, not about, like, what can necessarily happen afterwards. If you do the little things right and let the game come to you, like we'll make plays that we need to make because we're put in a position to do so. So quite honestly, I just want to focus on our team and how we can get better this week. Um, yeah. And Christian, you had a big game last year against Bowden, but obviously you focus on your guys' selves, but it is a nice ex- extra exciting to be under the lights, I assume, right? Very exciting. <laughs> There's nothing better under the lights on Garcelon against our rival team. And it's homecoming as well, so mm-hmm. I know there's going to be a big turnout. And I'm definitely excited, and so is the team. Yeah, a lot of alums obviously very proud of the victory over Amherst. I mean, was it mean to beat this team, a team that Bates hasn't, you know, you've been close the last few years, right? But to break through against them for the first time since 99, that's got to mean a lot, right? 100%. Oh, yeah. It feels, feels really good. Ever since I've been here, we've lost them by a score. And to finally get that win against them is huge, especially on their field too. I don't think I was born um last time this happened so i mean it feels good in that <laughs> regard we talk about it as a team um but it's like we we just doing the little things right and i think it's, it's starting to pay off it feels good yeah 1999 uh, you guys must have been born a little bit after that or not you 99 you were born 99, 99. you were oh one. Oh one. <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> a couple years earlier okay <laughs> and then um did it mean extra maybe for some of the assistant coaches also the former amherst coaches yeah they yeah. were they marked that game on their schedule <laughs> yeah. months prior and they were really excited um but yeah, they were they were really happy, especially because it was their first win, their first win as a staff together. So excellent, yeah, awesome. yeah. It was cool to see also Colton. I think really kind of bounce back, right? Because he had a rough second half against Colby, but he seemed to really no no fear in this game. I mean, what did you see from your quarterback? I mean, from Colton, like the entire week of practice, like he he was just like calm through the situations and like in the game he was calm as well. 
Um, we talked about picking each other up, like can't let mistakes kind of define the game. It's always about the next play. And Colton, um, as he comes to the sideline, I, I know he like continues to talk to the offensive line, talk to receivers about the things we're seeing and like what he's seeing. So I think it was just a big week of communication from him and knowing that like it's about the next play, not the previous play. And ultimately, we made those plays. And you seem to have a good connection with him. We saw it last year against Hamilton, right? Oh yeah, yeah. He loves he loves to find me, and yeah, that's why he's my favorite quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I guess any other thoughts either of you wanted to share on the Amherst game or the big game we have coming up? We haven't gotten to talk about or anything. Just excited for the opportunity, I guess, to play this week, like with all my teammates. That that's ultimately like the thing that makes it go the most. Um, Bowden under the lights with all our friends here. It's going to be a good time, I think. Yeah, it's it's definitely good to get our first win, but. Uh... You know, we got to move on to Bowdoin and focus on each week at a time, but more wins coming. Excellent. 5.30 p.m. kick on Saturday. Muhammad Diawara and Christian Oliveri, thanks so much. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. The defense turned in a strong performance as well on Saturday, and junior linebacker George Hawkins III led the way with a career-high 10 solo tackles. I will have to give all the credit to Coach Ergo with the game plan that we came up with and our scheme on stopping them. Basically, beginning of the game, he said, if it's not broken, we're not going to fix it. So we kept throwing the same thing at them. They couldn't stop it. So it led us to a lot of tackles and led to where everybody could make plays. You as a linebacker, you work a lot with uh, Tony Hooks in particular. Uh, Tony has mentioned that he actually hosted you when you were a recruit kind of here on campus and stuff like that. So tell us a little bit about that chemistry, working with you know Tony and the other linebackers. The chemistry is actually really great. We communicate all the time. We're constantly talking, constantly making sure we know what each person is doing, where we're supposed to be at at all times. So it's actually great. It's a great feeling. Awesome. And what was it like to celebrate the victory when they finally, you guys finally fell on that football at the end of the game where the ball was bouncing around there? What was that moment like for you? Oh, my gosh. I just laid on the ground and held two fists up in the air. And then somebody grabbed me and was like, are you okay? Are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm good. We just won. We just won. And it was so exciting. Tell me a little bit about your background. You grew up in Florida. Is that right? Um, I originally uh, was born in Philly, lived in Philly for about six years, and I moved to Florida because of, like, health issues. So I've been in Florida throughout the rest of my life. Gotcha. And how did you first get involved playing football? Uh, so I originally was playing soccer. So I was a soccer soccer star. And then I heard about football, and I asked my mom, I was like, can I go try out? Can I try, go try to play football? She was like, uh, I don't know. And I was like, she was like, I'll think about it. So she talked to one of her friends who – was at a park nearby for me to go play, and ever since then, I've stuck with it. Awesome. And so, you know, Florida, you mentioned you moved there at a fairly young age, it sounds like. Florida's a football hotbed, so what was it like competing, you know, at the high school level there? Uh, It was actually a lot. So the high school I went to, we're like number three or number four in state championships in Florida. So, like, it's very competitive, and we only play the best of the best. So it was great. It was a great competition feeling, so it makes it easier to, like, be in big moments. Great. And then when you were looking at colleges, you know, you're down in Florida, how did Bates up in Maine get on your radar? So, basically, I was at a Cornell co- Cornell camp. The Cornell coach, the DB coach, reached out to me, told me to come to the camp, and then that's when I seen Coach Patterson, who's no longer here, but he contacted me, said they would be interested told me to go ahead and apply. I was ED1 mm-hmm. and that I got in. Bowden night game was my visit, yeah. Halloween weekend, and they got the big win, and that was my visit. And my visit is always talked about because I was probably here the longest. <laughs> oh, that's right. Tony mentioned that. Yeah, 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 because he mentioned that you were here like the whole weekend, right? Yeah. <laughs> so everybody thought I was going here by then, so it's kind of funny. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And then um, first year here would have been the COVID year, so no season. And so what was that like for you? To, you come to college, you're ready to play football, and then there's, there's no season. Well, I felt like that gave me time to uh, build muscle mm. and add weight, which like some freshmen don't get to do when they first come into college. So I feel like it was more of a advantage than a disadvantage. Awesome. And then um, have you always been a linebacker? Uh, No. So this is only my second year playing linebacker. My whole high school career I played defensive end and nothing but defensive end. Okay. So you were focused on rushing that quarterback your whole high school career. Yes. Pass moves and boxing and spilling everything. Interesting. So what was the transition like moving from defensive end to a linebacker? What were some things you had to learn? Um. I guess, like, my awareness on the field had to be different. 
learning how to read uh, guards and tackles, and also pass drops. Mm. So that was another big thing, pass drops. Yeah, defending receivers and running back sometimes out of the backfield, right? Yeah, so I made sure like when I went back home that I did like some DB workouts so I can have the hips and feet to keep up with them. What are those workouts like? <laughs> They're very intense. It's more of like a, a learning how to get out of your stance, speed, how to quickly transition from breaking on the ball and to keeping up your speed with a wide right receiver. So. Awesome. And you mentioned uh, your visit here was the Halloween weekend, uh, the night game against Bowdoin. And now this weekend we have another uh, night game. It's going to be dark by the end, certainly, <laughs> against Bowdoin. 530 kick there. How excited are you for this rivalry matchup? I am very excited, especially since this was the game I visited on. So yeah. I can't wait. So I'm so excited and pumped and I actually get to play in it. And you guys, last year obviously had a great night game at Bowdoin. Uh, what do you remember about that one? I know you sacked the quarterback I saw a couple times, I think, in that game. <laughs> oh, the energy that game was so high. We really wanted to beat them. Um, and I think it was also, like, their homecoming or senior night. Mm. So we knew, like, they was going to come with everything they had at us. And we just stayed true to ourselves and prevailed. After the Kobe game, I mean, I thought the defense played well against Kobe. You were putting some tough spots and everything. After the Kobe game, what was the message going into this past week? Uh, the message was putting it together. Mm. So we put together a, fir- a good first half. Now we need to put together a good second half and bring it, bring all the pieces together. And that's exactly what we did in this past game while we got the victory. It was a wild back and forth game, wasn't it? I mean, that was a battle out there. Um, I mean, was that one of the more fun games of your career, perhaps? Um, yeah, it's up there. <laughs> yeah. It's up there. <laughs> it's competing with uh, Tufts and Bowden right now. So yeah, it's one of my. It's gotcha. one of those. Good games that we had. Yeah, the win against Tufts last season, right? Yes, yeah. that was that was very exciting and thrilling. Excellent. So, yeah, I guess any other thoughts on your time at Bates so far? Maybe some goals you have in your mind kind of going forward? I'm actually in the 3-2 program here. So I will be applying to Dartmouth at Columbia oh. in the beginning of December and soon to reach out to the coaches about playing there. So, Oh, interesting. So this is going to be your last season at Bates? Yes, so if I if I do get into Dartmouth and Columbia. For those who don't know, tell us about this this program you're in. So the three two program means you do three years at Bates and two years at another university of your choice. So basically, my major here is mechanical engineering. Mm-hmm. So uh, I have certain classes and things I have to take for me to be eligible to go there, and I have to have a certain GPA. So mechanical engineering, how did that get on your radar in terms of something you were wanting to study? Ever since I was little, I always like building things, constructing things, and just putting things together in my head. So like mechanical engineering was that major that I would be able to do that and actually be hands-on and working with other people and seeing the same goal and building structures because that's just so cool to me. Awesome. Yeah, any classes in particular here you've really enjoyed? Um, I would have to say the maybe maybe the – electric and magnetism class Mm. and learning how like that works with the major i'm doing so it was pretty interesting awesome so yeah it's a three two program so possibly some ivy league and george hawkins the third's future but uh george i want to thank you so much for joining us on the bobcast really appreciate it yeah thank you thank you for having me on here it was very exciting the bobcats received some recognition from the nascac this week on special teams junior archie green jr was named the conference's special teams player of the week for his punting and kicking on Saturday. He pinned the Mammoths inside their own 20 twice as a punter and also made a career-high three extra points in the victory. Well, we knew it was going to be a back-and-forth game. I think it was all about kind of just executing and doing what we know we can do best. Um, Obviously, I think the best part of that win was we're happy for Coach Coyne. That's his first win, and he deserves it more than anyone. But when it comes to the game, really, we knew we could beat them, and we knew if we just stuck to the script, that's what was going to happen. So it was good. And take us to a typical game day from a kicker and punter's perspe- point of view because it's a little different than everyone else, I imagine. Well, when I get to the locker room, that's honestly when my game day starts. I try to put on uh, my bottoms so I kind of have that feeling of, you know, it's very tight. The game day pants are very yeah. tight, so I try to stay loose and get to get the feel of that. Um, I go out, take some kicks, I warm up, I go through my own pregame routine. And about an hour and a half in, everyone comes out. Um, we start punting and kicking to returners, taking some field goal reps. And from there, the whole team comes out. They start doing their pat and go. Uh, quarterbacks are throwing to receivers, things like that. And then, boom, kickoff. And then, like, during the game, 
you're obviously you have a lot of different responsibilities. You do kickoffs, you do punts, you do plays kicking. So uh, you're always have to be ready to go out there, right? I mean, yes, always <laughs> ready. I'm always ready. I'm yeah. always knowing the situation. It's important because you never know what's going to happen. You do get some chances to kind of kick into a net during the game if you need to, right? Yes, there's yeah. always a net there. Um, yeah. Personally, I'm not a big kicking to the mm. net guy. I try not to waste, you know, reps on my leg. Mm. I, I I definitely prioritize making sure I'm good to go in the warm up, having a good warm up. So I don't really like need to think I have to kick in the net. Some sort of to say. You're from California, right? Yes. So growing up, how when did you first start playing football? Have you always been a kicker or punter, or how's that gone? Well, I grew up playing soccer my whole life. Okay, um, there you go. Youth soccer. <laughs> yeah, yep. That makes um, sense. When I when I got to high school as a freshman, I wanted to play football. Uh, we, I came, I come from a pretty storied high school uh, football program down there, and I just wanted to be a part of it. Um, I wore soccer cleats to practice one day, and they said, "Oh, so you can you kick?" I'm like, "I'll try," and made the extra point, and I guess the rest was history. And kicking a football compared to kicking a soccer ball, break it down for us. Well. Kicking a soccer ball is a little different because I guess you're trying to stay over it, you know, so you don't sky it and kick it over the net. While, well, as in football, you have to stay tall and really try to accelerate through the ball so you can get the ball up over defenders trying to block you and things like that. So that's probably the main difference. Were you doing double duty in high school also, punting and place kicking? My senior year, I did all three, yes. Okay, okay. So this is not new for you. No, no. Okay, no, yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> so coming to Bates, uh, you were basically exclusively the punter last year. Yes. Um, and this year you are pulling the double duty, though. So what's it like to have that extra, you know, return to what you used to do, I guess, in high school? I like it. Mm -hmm. Um I've always considered myself more of like a place kicker kickoff guy and punting something. You know, I don't consider myself a great punter. I consider myself a, a solid punter, a serviceable punter, and I just try to work hard at that and put my team in a good positions. But it really is just all about staying limber and flexible during the game. Like that's really what I try to do the most, and whatever happens out there happens. So place kicking, What um, you've had a couple chances to make field goals, so you've converted them. Um, take us through, though, maybe the longest field goal you've made, either in practice or back in high school. or Back in high school, yeah. I made um I made a 44-yarder against Central Catholic High School. Uh. They're, they're a team from uh, Tulare, California, I think, and they came down to play us. I was really nervous. Wasn't the best kick, but I made the distance, kind of a little line drive, but it went in, and that was probably the longest. Mm. Um, I've had some 40s in my high school career which were which were pretty great you know it's it's always a great feeling when it goes in how much do you stretch yourself out in practice kind of in terms of distance for field goals uh, during team period I guess kind of I listen to the coaches to yeah. where they feel they'll put me at a distance where they feel that possibly something could happen at, mm -hmm. at during the week but when I'm on my own really I just kind of freestyle it keep my legs warm see where I'm at like oh maybe I feel like I could hit a 50 off the stick today well we'll, we'll try that you know it's, yeah. I'm very free-flowing when it comes to that Great, and then you have some younger kickers on the roster this year. Are you serving as kind of a mentor there? Or? I try to, yeah. you know. I had a great mentor to me, Simon Redfern. He, mm -hmm. He's my brother. He, I consider him like family to me. He was a he was a great mentor, and I, I, try, I know I'm never going to be him, but I, I try my best to be kind of what he was to me because I felt like that made a good impact on me, and, and they're good kids. They're great kids. Awesome. And then the punting unit, I guess, this year, just from my point of view, has been it's been a pretty smooth operation. Um Take us through that whole group, kind of how you've been able to ha come together and and have some, you know, pen some teams deep. Well, we got coaches that love to coach it. They, yeah. As soon as they got here, they said we're gonna sort of like fix special teams, make it a priority, and it's honestly been a, a lot of credit goes to the coaching staff. Coach uh, Alfonso Belnavis, our special teams coordinator, Coach Maiden, Coach Coyne, of course, Coach uh, Radulski. Um, they've been great in terms in sort of just getting us ready, and I think a lot of that credit just goes to them in terms of. Uh, executing and pinning teams deep when we need to. I know you gave a shout out to your long snapper on Twitter, uh, Cole, right? Yeah, yeah. Cole's my brother. He's <laughs> he's my best friend, honestly. Um, I I can't do a lot of what I do without him. He's obviously our team captain. Um, if he could have been team captain his freshman year, if that's ever been a thing, <laughs> right? Um, I feel I I feel like he should, and a lot of people probably would agree with me. But he's like family to me. I I love him to death. Um, and this award sort of. It goes to, I feel goes to him in a way too. Yeah, because the linemen never get enough credit. Never. There's no stats, right, to, mm -hmm. to apply to them. But he, Cole DeMagister, is obviously one of the captains. What makes him such a good leader, as you just touched on? He just knows when to push people. He knows when to not push people. I think it's important for a captain to know, like, kind of that balance. And he just lives and breathes football. Um, it's kind of like 
you know, as someone who like doesn't, I love different sports, you know, football sometimes isn't my biggest love, but <laughs> when I'm next to him, man, I'm like, oh, I got to win for this dude. Like, that's honestly how I feel. Like I, I look at Cole and I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to be scared today because I have my brother, like he's not either. So I got to, I got to kind of get up and let's go. Great, great. Well, take us through when you were looking at colleges, being from California, what made Bates up here in Maine the place for you? Well, in co- in high school, I kind of was like a late bloomer in terms of the recruiting scene. I wasn't the biggest. I wasn't like the strongest. I didn't have the most powerful leg, I feel like. But I scored a lot, and I wanted to go to like a – I knew I wanted to play college football. So I got an email from Bowdoin, uh, uh, funny enough, one yeah. day. And uh, I was like, NESCAC conference. Like I showed my dad, like, what is this? We started looking and started sending recruiting emails, getting my film out there. I have um, an email from Coach Coyne when he was at Wesleyan. Uh, okay, yeah. Which was I thought was funny. I wanted to show that to him sometime. But, um, yeah, I just knew I wanted to go to a high academic school. I also knew I wanted to go far away from home. I wanted to mm. see, see New England and see different places of the country. So I came to Bates, fell in love with the campus, and that was really it for me. Awesome. Well, I guess any other thoughts you wanted to share about um, this past weekend's victory and the big game this Saturday against Bowdoin, right? Well, in terms of this past game's victory, yeah. I, I really just want to give thanks to my coaches back home. He, Joey Cejudo of Next Level Kicking, he's mm-hmm. my coach from back home. The, a lot of this comes from him. He taught me everything I know. I want to give thanks to God, of course, my family back home. I, 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 miss, I wish they were there to see that win. Mm-hmm. I, I miss them every time they're not. But in terms of Bowdoin, I'm, I, this is a great group, and I think that we're ready to put it to them. And I, each one of my teammates is going to come in focused and ready to finish the task at hand and represent Bates College to the fullest. So I think it's going to be a good weekend for us. Awesome. Archie Green Jr., the NESCAC Special Teams Player of the Week. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Aaron. We continue with our football coverage, but this time with the international version. The Bates men's soccer team played a pair of ranked teams on the road in NESCAC action over the weekend, and both matches were... Exciting to say the least. On Saturday, the Bobcats found themselves down 2-1 to one against number 8 nationally ranked Hamilton with less than a minute remaining. Sophomore Tiffe Agunoye got the ball into the box and it got tipped to junior Rawson Welch on the right side of the net. He one-timed it home for his first collegiate goal, securing a 2-2 draw against the Continentals. The next day, Bates was down 3 to nothing at halftime to 17th ranked Wesleyan. But the Bobcats pulled off a stunning rally, even taking a 4 to 3 lead in the second half before finishing the game tied with the Cardinals 4-4. Welch scored another goal in the Wesleyan game and he joined the Bobcats to look back on a wild weekend. Rawson, first of all, um, what a way to get your first collegiate goal. With seconds remaining against Hamilton, take us through how that developed as um, you, you got the ball uh, off a deflection from where your teammates looked like and was able to finish that off that equalizer. Yeah, that's right. Kind of just at the right place at the right time and really fortunate and happy to be able to help the team in any way possible. And as I said, just really lucky to be in, in the right spot at that moment and to equalize with uh, like 30 seconds on the clock. So really glad to get my first goal, but also to help the team uh, achieve a crucial point this weekend. Yeah, I was going to say in soccer, draws can, you know, be kind of, they can be deflating in, in some contexts or very encouraging in others. You had two pretty encouraging ties this weekend, right? <laughs> right, yeah. D- like, despite only uh, coming away this weekend with two ties, it's there's lots to be proud of as Wesleyan and Hamilton were great teams, and we showed lots of fight in both in both matches this weekend, especially in the Wesleyan match, like coming back from a, a 3-0 deficit at half and the momentum and um, that we demonstrated heading into that second half uh, was awesome, and it was just great and lots to be proud of coming out of this weekend. Yeah, because three zero in soccer um, might as well be you know ten nothing in other sports, right? I mean, like that's a big deficit, and that was at halftime. I think you were down three nothing. Is that right? That's right. So, what was the message at halftime, and what adjustments were made, and how'd you pull it off? Yeah, and so. Obviously, it's n- it's not an easy task to come back from a 3-0 deficit, but it took a lot of hard work, and at halftime, we got together, and we knew what we had to do, and we came together, and um, just one we, t- we took one goal uh, at a time and just thought that, like, if we got the first, then the second would come, and then once we got the third, like, then th- the fourth would eventually come, and it was just exciting. Unfortunately, we were scored on right after we took the lead, but um, it, w- it was still an awesome... Uh, demonstration of of the fight that this team has 
And going into the rest of the NESCAC games, I'm confident that no matter what happens, like everything will be left on the field. And really proud and excited to be on this team and, and really excited for what's, what's um, to hold um, as we finish up the season and hopefully clinch a NESCAC. Excellent. Spot. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I was going to say um, I was looking through like the, the archives, if you will, and I don't recall or see any 4-4 results to the years. I mean, that's a that's a rare score in soccer. Just take us through that match kind of in general and how wild it was. I mean, that's a high-scoring match. Yeah, very high-scoring. And as we said, like we were down 3-0 yeah. at half. So um, to score four goals in one half of soccer is incredible. So um, it, it, it took a lot of hard work, and I think being able to come back from a 3-0 deficit and scoring that many goals in such a small time period just like speaks volumes about like the potential we have as a team and the people and individuals and the collective um a group that we have and we're privileged to have to be able to f- fight together to produce a, t- um, a crucial tie in, yeah. in that setting especially great and yeah you mentioned the team you're one of the attackers um one of the forwards uh tell us about some of your um you know, peers there, you know, like, you know, Alex Horsevich, a senior captain. We saw Tiffany Gunley had a big weekend. What what impact do they make? Yeah. So no matter the role that um, any of my of the teammates play, like, it's just as crucial, ranging from the captains to the star, or like the starters, the forwards, the defenders. Everyone played a crucial role in this week, in the results that we achieved this weekend. So it, it's just from, like, Tefei scoring two goals to help set off the comeback um, in Wesleyan to, like, Max McCurzy um, playing great d- defense and um, providing uh, great communication and... Um, coordinating of of the team moving forward and just from the coaching staff to the players that didn't get a lot of minutes it is just a great um results um th- that was achieved as the collective team this weekend and like everyone played a role in the results that that um that we achieved and while it was only two ties like we have talked about like it, it, it took a lot of effort and wesley and hamilton were great teams Great, and now you have uh, Senior Day coming up here against uh, another tough opponent, obviously, in, in Tufts uh, this weekend. Uh, as of now, it's supposed to be at Russell Street Field, but tell us about what it'll mean for you to honor these seniors. I believe this will be our last game at home, so I think that uh, it's very important that we come out with the same energy mm. and effort that we demonstrated in the second half at Wesleyan, and I think that we can build off the results that took hard work this weekend and come up with a uh, big big result, hopefully a win against Tufts at home this Saturday. And we're willing to leave it all on the field and do whatever's necessary to get a win um, for the seniors on senior day. Excellent. And then take us back to when you were growing up, uh, Colorado, right? So um, when did you start? I mean, a lot of kids play soccer, but when did you start you know, getting into it competitively and thinking, I can play this in college, perhaps? Mm-hmm. Well, I started soccer when I was very young, but I thought I started to think about like playing soccer in college later on um, when I started high school as I saw players on my team um, ended up playing, and some of my best friends uh, ended up playing college soccer, and I value what soccer has to teach me in life lessons, and I wanted to continue my game and learn what, like, life lessons and, like, or life lessons through soccer by continuing to play at the uh, college level. So it, w- it was very um, an important decision for me when choosing where I wanted to go to school, and I'm so happy to be playing soccer at Bates and couldn't, couldn't be more happy. And how did Bates come on your radar being from Colorado and, and yeah. whatnot? Uh, I was very interested in being on the Northeast and uh, really wanted to play at a, a prestigious liberal arts school, specifically a, a NESCAC. So just naturally gravitated toward the Bates-type schools and everything was able to work out on both sides and really fortunate to be able to play for Bates. Great. Have you always been a forward? Yes. Uh, okay. Or winger. Yeah. <laughs> what do you enjoy most about it? A chance, obviously, to score probably. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To score and also just... Maintain width and get the ball to feed and make runs in behind and track back when necessary and and connect and hopefully 
but put the final touch on scoring a goal. And then obviously you have an interim head coach, Noah Riskind, who graduated from Bates himself a few years back. Um, tell us about him and the impact he's made. Yeah, Noah's done a terrific job um, from start of preseason to now. The leadership coming from the coaches has been excellent, as well as the technical drills and um, the soccer-associated aspect has been awesome. And I feel every practice there's a, a clear um, goal, and then I feel like everyone's striving to be better, and that's facilitated both through uh, Noah, Nano, and Carter. And really um, thankful for the excellent coaches that we have and everything that they do to prepare us for the games that we have, um, uh, the pr- yeah, the prospective games that we have. So um, no, the, coach, the coaching staff has been excellent and re- really value everything that they, um, they have provided for us uh, to be in the spot that we are now and, and just, just to um, be able to, when we're down 3-0, um, to come back in that manner, like that stems directly from the coaches and the environment that they cultivate. So um, they've done they've done a great job. I'm curious about you know after such a crazy weekend of soccer, the craziest I've seen uh, in a while. Uh, what was the conversations like on the bus coming back from Wesley and after you're like, wow, we just tied that team four four, we tied another team two two yesterday. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think that we there was lots to be proud of as I've said, yeah. and that. Um, like everyone felt great coming out of like tying a Wesleyan and tying a Hamilton because it took a lot of work to to uh, achieve those results. So come, like on the bus ride, like obviously all both those were away games, so they were, it was pretty far from Bates. So it was a lot of time, but the team is in a great great spot right now, and hopefully we can maintain this momentum as we head into Tufts next weekend. And as I said, just leave everything out, like leave everything out there and and finish strong and. Uh, I believe that the team's in a great spot right now. All right, Ross and Welch, thanks so much for joining us on the Bobcast. Congrats again on a great weekend. Thanks. The field hockey team split a pair of NESCAC road contests over the weekend, falling at Hamilton before bouncing back to beat Wesleyan on Sunday by a score of 3-2. to two. Junior Cammie Lambert scored a pair of goals and assisted on another in the victory. And she is our female Bobcat of the week. Well, Cammie, first of all, you had a hand in all three of the goals there against Wesleyan. Uh, I was particularly impressed by the the last one that you assisted on, where you just stole the ball from the yeah. <laughs> from the Wesleyan player and got ahead to Ella. But take us through kind of that game and what the team's focus really was, because it's a tough back to back road weekend in the NESCAC, right? Yeah, for sure. I think um, definitely going off like a double a double header weekend, we're going to be tired. So our main focus was just like playing our game and staying calm, staying focused, and just playing how we know how to play. And uh, your one of your goals. It was a good feed by Paige Cody, but take us through, like, when that ball's coming in, how are you trying to focus on directing that into the goal there, right? Yeah, I mean, we do a lot of practice um, with tipping and just, like, being ready in the circle and, like, where we should be positionally. So, I mean, you know, we're ready, we're, we're ready to go, and, yeah, just falling in games is just doing what we do every day. And you're part of this group that made a decision to kind of delay your graduation by, like, I guess a semester, right? So you're, yeah. you are you would have been um, a senior this year, right? Mm-hmm. But you're deciding to, you know, play this year and also play next fall. So tell us about your that decision-making process from your point of view when mm-hmm. you had to make that, you know, choice kind of when COVID hit, right? Yeah, it honestly was like. It was an easy decision, really. I mean, um, academics was just not what I wanted at the time. So I figured taking a break was just the easiest decision. And a bunch of girls in my class also decided to do that. So it just made it like easier all around. And knowing that we're going to only graduate one girl is like really exciting for next year. Yeah. Yeah. This group, I mean, it's going to be a lot of returnees. I mean, has, yeah. have you all talked about that at all about, you know, I mean, obviously you're focused on this season, but the potential of next year too, right? Yeah, we definitely, <laughs> we see the potential for next year, but we're so focused on yeah. this season and right now. Yeah. Well, you're from Maine, from Augusta. Mm-hmm. So take us through how, when you were growing up, you got into field hockey to begin with kind of. Yeah. I mean, I started field hockey when I was like, I think in fifth grade and it's just always been a sport, sport that I've been drawn to. Um, yeah. And I knew that NESCACs around here, like Colby, Bates, Bowden, um, were all schools that I was interested in. And I landed here, really loved the program, and it's been great ever since. I know in Maine high school field hockey, most schools, I would say probably almost all right, play on grass. Yeah, I yeah, I didn't play really on turf or even Astro, like, ever before <laughs> before college. So it was definitely a transition, but it's super fun, fast-paced. 
Yeah, take us through how you made that adjustment, kind of. Yeah, freshman year, I definitely, I I struggled a lot with the fast pace. I'm often, like, too fast for my own good sometimes. So getting used to just, like, um, having a stick on, like, having a handle on the ball and, like, staying in control was, like, difficult for me. But I made it there, yeah. Individually, you're having quite the season uh, in terms of goals scored and be- being involved in that offense. So what's that experience been like for you to be such a key cog kind of of this team? Yeah, it's been great. I think everyone's really like putting their best foot forward this season, um, especially knowing that we have so much talent. And um, it's been really great. I mean, I've struggled in the past with just like being confident in myself and like knowing that I'm here to play and like I made it here Um with, you know, all, all my strength and, like, all the things that I've learned in the past, and I'm ready, and, you know, it just kind of falls, yeah. One of the signature wins so far this year was over Bowdoin earlier in the season, first time the program had beaten Bowdoin since uh, 1984. What, yeah. what, what does that historic achievement kind of mean from your perspective? I mean, it's always been a game that we've known we yeah. could win, and, I mean, just to go out there and, like, get the get the scoreboard that we, we deserved really was just so exciting and, like, just a relief, yeah. And you mentioned you ended up at Bates, but you were interested in all the schools in the area, kind of. What made Bates stand out, really? I mean, just, like, the atmosphere on campus and, like, the culture. I know Danny Danny puts a lot of effort into team culture. And, I mean, the, the girls on the team, we all do. And it's something we take really seriously. And you can you can feel that when you step onto the field and when you meet the team. And then the NESCAC, as usual, is uh, full of uh, highly ranked teams. It's yeah. crazy, right? Uh, but, you know, this hard schedule, I mean, it looks like you're headed towards a NESCAC tournament bid most likely. We don't know what seating. You've still got plenty of regular season games left. But, mm-hmm. you know, you've got Tufts coming in this weekend, right? They're they're, they're highly ranked. But you, you've yeah. scrimmaged them already, right? So you're yeah. a little bit familiar with them. What does Tufts kind of bring to the table? Yeah, I mean, we've been excited for Tufts all all season. I mean, that that scrimmage was really exciting, and um, we really came back in the end there. So we're excited to just play them again. And as we always say, it's hard to beat a team twice. So, yeah. yeah. And it was close, right, in the scrimmage? Yeah, it yeah. was super close. Um, I think before we did our, our shootouts and corners and stuff, it was 2-2. So, mm-hmm. yeah, hoping for a good game. Excellent. And then um, it's the final home game of the regular season. And so mm-hmm. what's that mean to you in terms of, you know, playing in front of fans? What's that been like? I mean, you get good crowds. Like It's 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 noisy yeah. there, right? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, even with our, just our new bleachers, it's been awesome mm-hmm. to have, like, amazing crowds. And um, for our last home game, senior night's going to be amazing. Grace Biddle's just an awesome um, piece of our team, and she's really put her, like, biggest effort forward this season and we're excited to celebrate her yeah grace biddle's the team's goalie for those of you who don't know but and yeah she's the lone senior this year so what are the plans to honor her (laughs) yeah we got some stuff in the works i'm gonna keep it i'm gonna keep it on the dl (laughs) right right, right. (laughs) yeah for the surprise but yeah good stuff excellent excellent well any other thoughts you wanted to share kind of on the season so far we haven't got to talk about anything i mean I feel like we always say this, but just like our our team energy, we've really been focused on staying positive, but like also being calm and cool and knowing that we can play our game and doing it well. So yeah, just focusing on us this season has been such a big, big game changer. Awesome. Cami Lambert, our female Bobcat of the Week. Thanks so much. Thank you. In other Bates Athletics news this week, the women's soccer team earned a 2-2 draw at Hamilton on Saturday before falling at Wesleyan on Sunday. Meanwhile, in women's golf, first year Ruby Haylock and junior Alex Voigt Shelley both qualified as individuals for the 2023 NASCAC Championship. We'll catch up with them on next week's episode. It's a busy weekend of sports coming up for Bates, including senior days for men's and women's soccer and field hockey, and the big game at 5.30 p.m. on Saturday as football hosts Bowden. Stick with GoBatesBobcats.com for the latest news, and we'll recap all the excitement next time on the Bates Bobcast. Thanks, thanks,